Hi there, Nick Vince here, and welcome to Season 5 of the Chattering Hour. In this special Halloween edition, I'm joined by Mr. Charles Cyphers, one of John Carpenter's most recognisable alumni from films such as Halloween 1 and 2, Assault on Precinct 13, The Fog and Escape from New York. Up next on the Chattering Hour... Sheriff Brackett himself, Mr. Charles Cyphers. back with our special guest, Charles Cyphers. As I mentioned, he appears in Halloween as Sheriff Brackett and uttered that immortal line, It's Halloween. Everyone's entitled to one good scare. And he's reprised the role of Sheriff Brackett 40 years later in last year's box office hit, Halloween Kills. So many questions. Let's get to it. Chuck, thank you very much indeed for joining me here today. Sure, you're welcome. So I'd like to take you right back to the very beginning. Uh, where did you grow up? Uh, I was born in Niagara Falls, New York. What was a what was a fun day for you when you were a kid? Fun thing to do when I was a kid? Yeah. Well, you're going back a lot of years. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Well, we played a lot outside. You know, we, I, even at a young age, I was making pretend we were doing movies and stuff like that. What so sort- I'd, get, I'd get a few people and we'd make pretend we were doing a movie. Cowboys and stuff like that. Or was that the stuff you were watching, Westerns? We didn't have television until 1951. So... Uh, it was pretty rare. Now, uh, the only thing we did was go to movies uh, because there wasn't much on television except the test pattern. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah. I remember those days. Yeah. yeah. And do you have, do you remember a favorite film when you were growing up? A f- again, please. A favorite film when you were growing up. Oh, boy. Uh, well, my sister and I went to see The Thing. I mean, way back, James Arness, you know, was The Thing. It's just scared the bejesus out of her. She ducked down on the seat, you know. But, I mean, that's going way back. So uh, that was late 40s, early 50s. Uh, that was, uh, I mean, we go every week. It was like 12 cents. My right. father would give us a quarter. That recovers, get, you know, the bus into the movies and a piece of candy. Big spender. <laughs> <laughs> and do you remember, so you, you talked about the thing. Were there any actors who particularly inspired you? Uh, well, in terms of being, watching them and... Yeah. Well... I'm trying to remember. Of course, I always liked Errol Flynn. You know, he was dashing and exciting. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to remember the early movies we'd watch. Uh, it was pretty antiquated. You know, I there wasn't much of a choice. And what? Oh, I forgot. Hop along, Cassidy. Oh, hop along, Cassidy. Okay, okay. And so, when did your love of that? You talked about recreating the films when did you first start acting well uh let's see i was scared to death you know we'd get up and have these sunday school things where you had to stand in front of people and recite something and i just always freaked out because i was afraid i was going to forget stuff that was way back I, i was always sort of a ham you know in in class 
you know, that sort of thing. Uh, then we, I'm trying to remember, well, I'll go back to about when I was 14 or 15. I had a friend of mine who had a Brownie camera. You know, we make our own movies. Of course, he starred in every one of them because he owned the camera. I was just a supporting cast. But we went on and, and uh, I, you know, I did my stint in the Navy from 57 to 60, I guess it was 61. And uh, I made my way out to Hollywood, but I'll, you, you can go further on that. I, he was a friend of mine, so that was pretty much, I remember I had part in the high school play. It's an off-stage speaking part. And I remember I flubbed my line. And I had the script. How about that? Oh, God, it was awful. But then uh, then I joined the Navy and, you know, and uh, kind of went on from there. Right. So what was your first professional job then? You mean I got paid for? Yeah. I did some army training films while well, I was in New York at the American Academy. They paid me. I was sort of like their bad boy, bad boy soldier, you know. And I'm actually, they took me to Berlin to do a film about guys that jumped the border to go to the communist side. Training, training film, believe it or not. Uh, so I got compensated for that but uh professionally speaking i was uh i think i did a roger corman film way back and i remember it was a small part of guard or something and i remember i looked at him and he said well you need to get your hair cut and i put my hand out to get money so he gave me money to get a haircut that that's nice. That's pretty nice, you know. But I that was way back, you know. Well, I, you know, Roger Corman was is has always been known as the king of the independent. Film. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. But obviously, from reading his book uh, on making films, he always treated actors with respect. I think. Yeah, he was he was decent. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, that was going way back. Uh, I I got back out to. Hollywood, so to speak, in the mid 60s. I graduated from American Academy of Dramatic Arts in 64. And then I hitchhiked out to California. And I've done it three or four times back and forth. That's when you could do stuff like that, you know, without being endangered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember growing up as a kid, and my father always insisting to get you know that we always gave people a lift if we saw hitchhikers yeah. on the road. I'm talking about the sixties. Uh, um, in my case, I know you, you you're out at Hollywood, but I also understand that you did some theatre on bro um, off Broadway. Well, I did a couple of small off Broadway plays, and then I uh, when I went out to Los Angeles, I was in the theatre group for a number of years, for quite a while. It's called the Company of Angels. And we, we did quite a few little plays at that time. And, uh, and the core of the group actually were actors who started to work a bit. We, we did a hit play uh, in, in Los Angeles called The Last Meeting of the Knights of the White Magnolia. And uh, it ran for a pretty good time. And a lot of us started working from that. You know, things changed drastically. It used to be people that would come down to see you in plays. And that was that one was getting a lot of recognition. Uh, it's all changed now. But so all of us got kind of got working after that. You know. Cool. And do you, I mean, you've done film, theater, and TV. Yeah. Do you have a prefer? Do you prefer one over the other? Well, no, I, I, you know, I enjoyed doing plays because you know it's the basic groundwork. Uh, well, it depends on what the project is. I mean, at the beginning when I started off, I 
didn't mind just doing, you know, whatever I got paid for, even small parts. Uh, but no, I they're both they're both important in terms of adjusting yourself. And you know, when you're on stage, you're it's a whole different thing. When you're doing film, you just take the knobs and turn them down a little bit, you know. Yeah. And I understand that one of your early roles on TV was on the Betty White show. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, I got a chance to audition. They took me in, and actually, I was a stunt double. It, the, the program was sort of premised that uh, she was supposed to be doing a series, and I was her stunt double. So I would have to dress like her occasionally, you know, and coming in wearing the high heels and all the rest of the accompaniments. But I, yeah, it was something. We we ran about 13 weeks on that one. She was a joy to work with. And yeah. you know, when I, there I was walking around, <laughs> dressed up like her. Not all the time, but, you know. Do you, do you remember any favorite moments from working with Betty White? Yeah, I remember she walked by me once and said, God, your legs are better than mine. You know, <laughs> I said, oh, really? Oh, you know, she's very funny, very funny <laughs> and fun to work with. Right, right, right. What do you look for? Talking about working with other people, uh, what do you look for when you're working with other actors? What do you most admire in other actors? Well, it depends on the medium and if you're in a play and you've been rehearsing together for a while, you know, uh, when when you're working in film or whatever, you're usually hired and you come in and, you know, and do your job and then you're gone. Well, I mean, you know, just professional courtesy. Uh, some people <laughs> in the business actually, you know, start to get the idea that they're better than God, you know. And uh, just uh, people that treat people genuinely, uh, that sort of thing. Right, 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 right. Cool. Now, one of your earliest films was with John Carpenter in 1976, Assault right. on Precinct right. 13. Right. Yeah. How did you meet John Carpenter? Well, I was already working a little bit in the business. And... Uh, it was a call, I guess, to go out and audition for him. It was in, in Hollywood. It's uh, somebody's house in an apartment. So I read for the part. And uh, I got it. And that was our first project together. And uh, from there on in, I did six or seven more. So I started, became part of his stock company. What do you remember most about? assault on precinct 13 well we all got killed it was you know everybody got shot up real good but uh you know it uh because it's become somewhat of a classic uh movie i can remember it's pretty astounding when that little girl got shot and, I, and for the time it was like whoa you know but uh it was done in a small kind of an old jail and I remember a lot of those squibs, we all got shot. And, uh, it, you know, it went along pretty good. Nancy was in it. Uh, a number of other people. But uh, it's, uh, it, it was fairly, we did fairly quick. All right. Right. And then on 1978, you went on to do Halloween with John Carpenter. Yeah, that was, that was, I came back as, you know, Sheriff Brackett. And we did that fairly quick, too. Three weeks. Really? Yeah, it was, it was pretty well planned out. And, and uh, Donald Pleasance was a joy to work with. He was something to say, you know. But, uh, yeah, I only worked a week on that. And, you know, it uh, went by quick, and everybody sort of was like doing a home movie. And so we uh, we all did a, our part, and and remember, I think the budget was like three hundred thousand dollars. And you know, it, it, we all did it, and then of course, it gained its own fame. Eventually, it didn't happen right off. 
and uh, we kind of went from there. What What was your impression of um, Jamie Lee Curtis? Because I think this is one of her very early films as well. Oh yeah, I didn't have much to do with her. I ran into her, bump into her, and go, "Hey, it's Halloween." And I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare. No, she was just a young actress, and uh, I didn't have much to do with her in the film. Mostly, it was with Donald Pleasance. But right. uh, it's interesting because when I came back to do Halloween Kills, I met her on the set many years, of course, later. Oh, Charles, my God, you know. So it, she's always been quite, uh, quite friendly and open, you know. What was, well, I guess you got to see Halloween in the, in the cinema. Did you go and see one of the early screenings of Halloween with an audience? When I saw the, the film. Yeah, when you saw the film, was it with the audience? Yeah, they showed a preview of it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, I don't, we never knew it was going to take off like it did. Right. But, of course, it did. And then I remember seeing it myself in 78, 79, thinking, God, this is a pretty scary movie. And then, uh, whoa. What was your favorite moment on making Halloween? Well, uh, most of my stuff was with Donald Pleasance. Um, you know, just uh, wandering into the house and looking around. And that, uh, you know, that was pretty much it. Just any, any of my scenes with him. Right. You know. Cool. And... As you say, you didn't really expect it to take off like it did. When did you? No, get no. All... I mean, you know, it was it was a job, and yeah, we moved on afterwards. And I, you know, I started working quite a bit then. So it was, uh, it it was, you know, it's funny. My manager uh, said to me, you know, you were in a movie that probably everybody has seen. Halloween. I mean, there's not many films you could talk about that that would be so so it's sort of a classic movie the idea when did you get offered halloween 2 when well it was so we did that i think it was in 81 and of course i get replaced in the movie i thought that's sad my daughter nancy loom was was killed and I remember one of the guys said why don't you go and take it easy? Uh, I'll take over from you. Of course, my 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 actor self, I said, no, I don't want to. <laughs> but obviously, I did. You know. Yeah, yeah. And then it yeah. led to the fog, and uh, you know, escape from New York, that sort of thing. So I you know, was very fortunate that I ran into John and was part of his repertory company. What was it like working with um, Adrienne Barbeau playing her? Oh, she's uh, she's super. I mean, just uh, really good. She, her performance in The Fog was quite good. We saw it at a drive-in at one of the conventions. And I thought, God, she was really good. I, wonderful actress and you know, just very giving. Cool. What... Um... You mentioned earlier on that you went on to do Escape from New York. Yeah. You didn't have a huge m amount to do in terms of lines. No, I'm not, not much at all. But, you know, when you get a part, you, you make the most of it and pick your paycheck up, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. You know, it just it is what it is, and, you know, and you move on. Right. Now... One of the things I was, I was watching it um, again the other day. I'm not seen it for years, and what you do just seem to do an awful lot of reacting. But you, you know, you're just there reacting to what's being said over the communications. Well, to... when I was a young actor, you know, everybody thinks you know because you have all these lines and whatever, you got to learn to listen. And react and over not overreact, you know. So you just become part of the whole thing, depending on 
what your part calls for. But uh, I was very fortunate in many ways. My, my theater background was very helpful to me uh, in terms of uh, listening, reacting. You know, cameras on you, that's different. Right. What now you worked with John Carpenter a number of times. What did you yeah. can, what do you think of his style? Can you describe his what style of working with actors? I, in assault, I, I we didn't have a lot to do. I mean, uh it was in a very small space. When I got to Hollywood uh, Halloween, uh yeah, it was uh, I, I enjoyed working with him because he he knew specifically what he wanted to do. And, uh, and, and, you know, uh, my feeling was, this is what the scene's about. You know, this is what he, he was interested in doing. I found him uh, easy to work for. Uh, and he knew in, in his mind what he wanted to shoot. And so uh, I always found him to be uh, enjoyable to work with. Right. Right. Yeah. And something, uh, somebody else that you worked with in 1982 was Charles Bronson in Death Wish 2. Very interesting. You know, I, I, uh, yeah, I, I saw that again the other day. And, you know, if you're going to take a small part, then make sure it's an important part. So in that movie, I got a chance to let him go. So I remember talking with him. He didn't talk much. He was very quiet to himself. And I remember him chewing sunflower seeds. So I said to him, did you used to smoke? And he looked at me and he said, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that was one of the longest conversations I had with him. <laughs> but I mean, you know, very strong actor. And he's good. He was very good. I number of the films I've seen him in. Yeah, Death Wish too. He went on and did a few of those. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What uh, I'm going on to something else that you did in the 1980s, and that was Major League playing. Oh, I would, that was Charlie. a big. That was a big. Yeah. Big. I work. You know, I went over, and this is a kind of a e eerie thing. I was cast in a film to go over and shoot in Hungary. And in that film was George Clooney, Charlie Sheen. It was the first movies they'd ever done, and Laura Dern. And it was some experience, let me tell you. Well, the Russians were creating all kinds of ruckus, shooting machine guns, and you know, just noise that was annoying. But uh, I don't know what I think. I guess they saved some of that and. And I guess it's been put out again, but I never saw any money from it. But it was about a big bear. How did that lead to uh, Major League? Well, Major League was it, it was interesting. I had a crew cut for many years, and uh, I went in to read for it. And I remember they tossed the ball to me while we're in the room, so uh, that meant I got the bar. And uh, we, we did it in sections. Uh, some of it was done in Tucson. And then we did some actually in Milwaukee. Uh, and so I had a break in between. But that film's gone on to be quite successful. And 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 I when I do conventions, people will come up to me, and uh, men and women, who are big fans of the movie, you know? What? Tom Barrage, I remember, was just, you know, incredible, all the people working in it. And uh, so it was a nice thing to be hooked up with. What, what are you talking about conventions? Uh, what are the mostly popular films? What are your most popular films that people ask you about when you're at conventions? Well, Halloween, mainly. Uh, the Fog. Uh, escape from New York occasionally, but uh, and then you get people that bring stuff in that you're amazed that they were able to get it. 
I mean, small things that you did in other films. Basically, mostly Halloween. A lot of people want to know what was Donald Pleasant's like to work with and uh, that sort of thing. What do you, when you're not acting, Yeah. What, what do you do in your spare time? What Do you have any hobbies? That's interesting. Well, I don't, you know, really work that much anymore. But I, uh, I was living outside of Tucson for quite a while. Uh, I had a small five acre place. And uh, yeah, mainly I, I started to do a little artwork, uh, some painting, nothing, just abstract stuff. Uh, and uh, at the time I was in pretty good shape. So I was doing a lot of walking, that sort of thing. What are we, you're talking about having a, had a long career over 50 years? Are there any parts that you really wish you'd had a chance to play, you know, or would like to play now? Are there any parts you'd particularly like to do? Well, <laughs> you know, it's everybody gets cast. I had a tough time breaking in. You know, uh, I did a lot of early television, small parts. But they one thing led to another thing. At that time in the 70s, you know, they did a lot of series. So sometimes they took you from one show, like Barnaby Jones and things like that, you know, and you became the guy, you know, that was either the bad guy or whatever. But, uh, you know, I I was just fortunate to keep working. That's, that's what you want to do, you know. What do you think is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Personally or professionally? But both, I guess. Keep your Either mouth or. shut. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> and do your job. Uh, I remember Lillian Gish. I was a young student at the American Academy, and I met Lillian Gish. And um, I remember she said something to me interesting to me uh, afterwards. That was at 25, 26. She said, be prepared to take a lot of different jobs. Uh, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> but uh, best advice I got? Well, uh, I, you know, I had to support myself. A lot of times I did a lot of jobs. I was a light mover, bartender, you name it. I, you know, I, it's uh, learning, learning how to listen is not just, it's important in acting to, you know, listen to what is being sung and reacting to it. Uh, do your job, you know come in and uh, be on time. I remember I was teaching at the American Academy and I said to the young students, be on time, lower your lines and I'll give you an A. <laughs> Not everybody got that, you know? But uh, I guess it was the way I was raised, the work ethic, you know? You don't get any, nobody gives you anything. You have to work for it. Somehow or another. Some people get lucky. You know, but, uh, you know, you got to be in the arena. And, you know, when you're moving up in age, and I was, I said, I'll give myself 10 years. You know, like a, a doctor or something like that. And I eventually got moving and working. There were good times and bad times, you know, in the sense of uh, one day it's milk and honey, the next day it's look for money. You know, but uh, I'm 83 now and I had a decent career. I guess you could call it decent. Um, Halloween was, it's funny because that was not uh, a big hit right away afterwards. And I was already working somewhat. 
So uh, going to conventions and all was kind of fun after that. It wasn't right away. Did you get to see Halloween Kills? I have seen pieces of it, yeah. What it did was you interesting they brought me back for that because Sheriff Brackett never got killed. I mean, he, he was supposed to retire to Florida or something. And I guess when they decided to bring him back, they brought me back. I was it used to be a, a sheriff of the town, and now I was a nighttime security guard. Shows you what happens in your life. <laughs> but it was it was great they brought me back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw myself get killed first night of shooting. Michael turned around, pulled a knife out of his back, and cut my throat. I said, what a guy. <laughs> that guy. You do you still do art? You said that you did some you do some art. Are you still painting? Well, I have all the materials. <laughs> I've been moving around. I live sort of in a trailer now. I don't have a mobile home. I've been traveling around and I, you know, the last I had a home uh, for quite a while, which I sold and moved back and forth across the country. But then I came back to a place that I had the home at. And yeah, I have a trailer next to my motorhome and I'm about to get back busy with it, but I'm still trying to get it all figured out. Right. Just, just do it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, sometimes it's hard. Um have you got are you working on anything else at the moment? You mentioned the uh, 84, but have you got any other projects? Have you got any no. other projects no. coming up? Moment. That's about it for me, the Halloween kills. Right. Uh, that's pretty much it. You know, my age, you're lucky. You're lucky to, <laughs> you know, I've worked quite a bit still. So. Yeah. But, you know, if you're not in, in and around the scene, that's pretty much it. You know, I, I look at my career and go, yeah, I did okay. You know, yeah. I did all right. But it's uh, a lot of years in between. I mean, when you think about me hitchhiking out and, 65, 75, 85, 95, you know what? <laughs> they didn't pass out parts. You know, I mean, you, you'd have to get recognized at first and then work a bit. And it's all changed now. It's a, a whole different game. In what way do you, in what way is it well, changed? I mean, when I started, you know, I mean, you, you did plays, theater. People would come down and see it, you know, and then we got into a hip play and that was quite a good uh, step for me. All the casting people started using you. Now it's a whole different thing. I've even heard stories where you, you get, you do scenes for people and, and you have to pay. They mm -hmm. come and see, it's like, I don't even know how people get cast anymore. I'm, been out of it for so long right, right. yeah that's thank you charles now the way we normally end this um this show is yeah. that i i kind of put you on the spot and with little warning unless chris happened to mention this there's a section called the luggage in the crypt where i like you to imagine what piece of music, what piece of artwork, what book would you take with you into the afterlife? The afterlife. Yeah, yeah. What what would you? About you know, one that I'm writing or something like that. Oh, you are you writing a book? No, no. But no. I mean, in my head, I am. Right. What piece? But, what what would I take with me? Oh, Shakespeare. One of my favorite plays is Hamlet, only because I've seen it above six or seven times and I've been in it, Shakespeare in the park. But I, uh, a book of Shakespeare, I suppose, could be good. What, um, what, who did you play in Hamlet? Oh, I had a small part, you know, it was at the beginning of my career, you know. But uh, Othello, uh, I, I had one line on Othello, James Earl Jones was Shakespeare in the Park. 
Wow. And I remember I had to run upstairs and come down and say, the Turkish fleet in preparation makes for roads. So as I've been tell you by Senior Agnello, which I thought was a huge part, you know, you know out of breath. You know. But uh, yeah, that, I take that and uh, what else would I do? You know, you know, in the afterlife, you wonder about that. You were wondering somewhere walking. I don't know, and and uh, the whole idea of wonderful days we have on Earth, even though they don't seem wonderful. Sun up, sun down, birds flying, simple stuff. You know that we often miss out on because we're too busy with other things. You know, and this whole hurricane thing that's going on here now is like, wow. And uh, just the whole idea of uh, being aware, alive. You know, grateful for each day. That about sums it up. Right. What about a film? What about a favorite film? My favorite film? Mm -hmm. I like Lawrence of Arabia. One of my favorites. Uh, so many of them. I like The Quiet Man. John Wayne. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just so, so many of them. Uh, I like Turner Classic Movies. And, and watching the older films, how wonderful the lighting was, and you know the stories were they had good scripts, you know that sort of thing. I don't know, you know, it's uh, not much to watch anymore. I mean, I've seen so many movies, you know, but uh, oh, interesting. That's pretty much it. What about um? You mentioned the book you're writing in your head. What sort of books do you read? Well, I was just reading, you know, I had some time in the plane. And I had Call of the Wild, you know, I I I had never read that whole story. The viewpoint on the dogs park. You know, but the dogs being the sled dogs and mm -hmm. and I I was reading that thinking, boy, isn't that interesting, you know? How they the writer put himself in place of, you know, the animals. Mm -hmm. Uh I, you know, I, 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 I uh, the books that I like to read are uh, kind of like not mysteries, but uh, not science fiction, but more of uh, something that carries you along in the story. You know, that type of thing. Right. You know, that's basically it. What, um, what about music? What sort of music do you listen to? About what? What sort of music do you listen to? Wow, that's a good question. Not as much as I, I should. I like uh, piano music. You know, uh, Horowitz, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I don't like, and I'm not it. When I was younger, Rolling Stones, stuff like that. But, a lot of it's just noise, you know, it's, you just, uh, I like or, or orchestra type things, you know, just relaxing music. That's about it. Okay. And what's your, what sort of favorite food or drink? <laughs> well, I've sort of left drink behind me, but uh, I like whiskey occasionally a little bit. Uh, I like Guinness beer. Uh, that's pretty much it. I, I should drink more water, but I don't. Right. I don't know. Oh, we all should. We all should. Yeah, really. What about favorite food? Well, I mean, you know, I live by myself a lot. So a good breakfast, you know, uh, I like oatmeal. Uh, it's a matter of preparing the food, you know, and uh, I like Italian food, Mexican food. I mean, it's just uh, when you live by yourself, which I have most of my life, uh, it means you got to make it. 
<laughs> or prepare it. But uh, simple food like that, you know. I, like I like a good steak every once in a while. But uh, that's about it. Right, right. Do you, are you you talked about doing your own painting? Do you have any favorite artists? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm just trying to recall some of the people that are, you know, Van Gogh who always liked his stuff, uh, Impressionist paintings. Uh, I'm trying to think of, uh, what is the name of the guy who painted the nudes? Uh, can't think of his name right off, but, you know, uh, mostly Impressionist stuff. You know, that type right. of thing. Right, right, right. And do you have um, a luxury that you're really fond of, like a particular soap or a scent or a, something that's kind of got no practical use, but you're just really fond of? Yeah, I collect guns. Really? Yeah. Not many. No. I, uh, you know, I just, uh, I have a couple of, you know, rifles and things of that sort. But, uh, you know, because you have to, in Arizona, we, you know, you, you're allowed to have weapons. But I, uh, tar I used to like to target shoot quite a bit, but I don't do much anymore. Um, that's really about it. Uh, yeah. what, what's your favorite gun? Well, my favorite and one that I haven't used, I have three or four sitting around. I just bought a 3030 uh, Henry's rifle. Uh, I have an SKS, which is an antiquated Russian rifle. I have a 357 uh, pistol. Uh, and I have a 22 Henry's uh, Magnum rifle, pump rifle, shotgun. You know. Right. It's fascinating. It's so different over here. We we don't have similar you, gun uh, laws. You can't, in England, you can't have guns? You can. Um, it's very highly restricted, though. It's just a completely different culture. You yeah. Know, the, you know, the pe I remember growing up and there was a gun shop in town, but that's because I grew up in a town that was fairly close to the countryside. So you had a lot of farmers who were killing vermin, and shotguns and, and hunting. A lot of my friends used to have a farm where they reared um, pheasants for shooting, you know, you know, and that was very much a sort of a weekend sport for people. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a different culture over here as far as guns are concerned. Well, what, you know, the, it's interesting with the Queen passing. Mm. I remember in 1952, I think it was that then that she became the queen. Mm. Because I remember Sir Edmund Hillary climbed Mount Everest. Yes. And that was like a big event. But I mean, the whole idea of her passing, you know, she lived a long life. And uh, it's funny, I strange you, you see clips now and and uh, she's gone and we're all moving on and uh well certainly well thought of by the whole royal family is kind of that little i don't know yeah it's like who's who's what and what's who and yes it's, i i actually did have to look up a family tree to try and work out who kind of moved up one what their titles became yeah yeah because yeah. of course a lot of the time they're referred to by their title and it's like i have no clue which is which um it's <laughs> well she, she she'll be missed i'm sure yeah yeah i think it, yeah. it was a great outpour well, john had to wait a long time no. yes 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 he's not going to be able to emulate his mother i don't think oh, in terms oh. of a reign i mean so a after him is it william Yes. The, the oldest son. Yes. So he's next in line. Yes. And then his daughter. It doesn't go to Harry. Really? It goes, yes, it goes to primogenitor. They call it primogenitor. If, if I've got this right, forgive me any royalist. I'm not a royalist. I don't yeah. really. But from my understanding, it doesn't go to his brother. 
it goes to William's ch children oh. in order. Oh. Um, so he's got a couple, I think he's got a son, then a daughter. So it'll go to the son first, and then it'll go to the daughter, which is a change it only happened in that, that the daughter could inherit the crown from her brother. Yeah. Uh, um, so it's a... Well, I mean, the turn-on for her was... I mean, stunning. I, I, mm. You know, and it should have been. She was... Did so much. I mean, she was everywhere. Yeah. And was she 95 or 96? Something like that. Something like that. I know she was a, my mother passed away uh, over a decade ago now, but they were the same age. Um, oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that sounds about right. As I say, I'm a, I'm a Republican. So <laughs> I, I don't believe in the monarchy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's interesting because I, I don't know how how it's related to these days. I'm with her gone now, and Charles the Third, sadly, as officially now. Yeah, I mean, in terms of importance, uh, does the monarchy carry any weight? Uh, it does. It. I think it's still. Uh, it's still supported by a about 70 percent of the population but that is down funnily enough it used to be 75 oh percent of the population yeah. but that's and there's nothing against charles i think yeah, people just that. think you know the use of the, the, the things and the, and I, I know that the republican group said that they had a lot of inquiry yeah, when you say republicans do you mean they would replace America, we have republicans democrats independents yeah i mean republic as in we would so at the moment i am a subject, subject. i am i'm a subject as i am a subject of charles the third oh legally i'm a subject i am not a citizen oh. of the united Kingdom. yes which makes a lot of people's blood boil and say why does this family but anyway this is going to try to get controversial <laughs> And I know our friend Chris is a huge fan of the um, of the TV version of the royal oh, family, yeah. the oh, Crown. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And good on him for making such a brilliant TV series. But yes, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens going forward. Charles, Chuck, this has been fascinating. Thank you very much. Oh, indeed. thank you uh, for the for the interview, and uh, it's nice speaking speaking with you and, and uh, that sort of thing. Thank you again to Charles Cyphers, and thank you for joining me this Halloween. I'm back on November the 10th when I shall be talking with Art the Clown from Terrifier 1 and this year's smash hit, Terrifier 2, David Howard Thornton. Join me then, and in the meantime, stay safe and well. <laughs>